up, everyone? This is Savvy here. I'm here with KG Sakota. Now, KG, you made your return at Shockwave after a long nine months away. You did this with a little controversy. I mean, you turned on your teammates, specifically Solo Snuka. I mean, let's check out the footage. Alcatraz has Solo going to tag KG Sakota. Smelly checking in. Wait a minute, KG pulled his hand back. What is this? Oh, KG oh. Sakota with the spin. poison mist. The green mist. Smelly rolls him up. It's over. What is going on? Here are your winners. Well, in case you weren't paying attention, KG spat in Solo's face. That's what happened. That's disgusting. Wow. Checking out that footage, what were you thinking? And do you have any thoughts on your match tonight with Snuka? My thoughts? Let me tell you something. I've been gone for UPW for nine months. Nine months. And Snuka thinks that I'm a tag team with him? Why in the world would I tag up with Snuka when I'm main eventing in Japan with Otani and Tanaka? This right here is what Team Emblem wears. This is first class. This, you can get at the Anaheim Marketplace, five for $10. This shirt is garbage, all you fans out there are garbage, and the only thing that matters are my fans in Japan and Samurai TV. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, representing Team Emblem, weighing in at 237 pounds, KG Sakuda! Well, some derogatory words there towards UPW by KG Sakuda. You know, I'd like to remind him not to uh, bite the hand that has fed him all these years. Yeah, sure, he's part of Team Emblem now with Otani and Tanaka in Japan, but where the hell did he get his start? Let me ask you that, Josh. He may have got his start here in UPW. You're absolutely right, but he's got a point. He's in Japan main eventing with their top stars. Snuka, what's he done? So he's got a name. His opponent from the South Pacific, weighing in at 235 pounds, Solo Snuka! Well, let me tell you something, Josh Waldrop. Solo Snuka does not have to be relegated to the shadow of his legendary father. This kid is a second generation superstar who can stand alone by his own merit, no doubt about it. Oh, I can tell, and as we're going to see in this match right now with Keiji Sakota, I'm sure that Solo Snuka can get a coconut broke over his head with the best of them. Well, let me tell you something, Josh. A lot of bad blood in this matchup. Solo Snuka recruited a returning KG Sakota after nine months away from UPW to be his tag team partner in a six-man tag. And KG Sakota blatantly turns against Snuka in that matchup. Just an absolute show of disdain and disrespect. I don't know what KG's thinking. Look at this new attitude, just sitting back with his arms behind his head. Total show of disrespect for his opponent in this matchup. That's right. How long did he wrestle for us and toil in obscurity? Now he's making the big time because he's got new confidence, he's got a whole new attitude, and he's a whole new man, this KG Sakota. I like it. Well, he's talking the talk as we saw in that backstage interview along with Savvy, but can he walk the walk? And he's going to have to prove that in this matchup with Solo Snuka. Should be a good one. Absolutely. I don't mean to take anything away from Solo. He's a great wrestler, but I just frankly believe he's in the ring right now with a man who's going to take him to school. Certainly looks to be an even matchup. Nice go behind, amateur style takedown by Solo Snuka. Goes for the quick cover, and I don't think really looking for the win there. Just trying to prove that he can get KG Sakota into a pinning predicament early. I guarantee you, look at that. Sakota can't be rattled that easily. He's diving out. He knows he can afford to take a breath right now, regroup himself. He's going to make Solo wait and work this match on his timetable, well, not Solo's. That's one man's opinion. I think he was clearly out-wrestled in the early going of the matchup, and he's had some trouble here so far with one Solo Snooker. It's called a false sense of security. He wants to get Solo nice and comfortable in there, thinking he's got a chance to win before he busts out that roaring elbow and shows him what it's all about. Well, Sakota can put an opponent away in a number of ways. That roaring elbow, as you mentioned, also the diamond dust. He's a devastating uh, grappler, no doubt about it. One of the most dominant men in the history of UPW, but Snooker has really shown me a lot as of late as well. I'll tell you what, 
This is going to be a good match, but I just think that at the end of it, Solo is going to be looking a little green, if you know what I mean. Snooking out, trying to send Sakota in. Reversal, there's some of that agility into a high cross body, hook of the leg, only gets a one count. It takes a lot to keep Sakota down for the three. What did he even go for that pin for? You're not going to pin a man like KG Sakota that early in the match. Come on, work him down a little bit. Sakota, a powerful individual, but he has a lot of agility in his own right. These two so evenly match. You got to think the winner of this thing is going to be propelled right up the ranks here in UPW. Snooker there, maybe going to the well one too many times. Nobody home for that flying crossbody. And, and uh, Sakota locks him there with a beautiful T bone suplex up and over. Absolutely. As you can tell in that pre tape that we heard with uh, KG Sakota, he doesn't have much love for UPW. He's having success over in Japan right now, but he came back here for one reason only. He wants to prove a point, and he's doing it to Snuka right now. Well, right now he's in the driver's seat of this matchup, to be sure, but you can never count Snuka out. And Sakota, I've seen a lot of confidence, but I think also arrogance on his part. He better not take Snuka lightly in this matchup, or it's going to come back and bite him. Todd Kelly, when you're that good, you can afford to be arrogant. Well, I got to say something. Sakota with some sound strategy here. He's trying to slow the pace down using a methodical pace, big impact maneuvers, and strikes to try and ground the high flying Snuka. Nah, he's just toying with them now. I'm sure he could have put him away 10 minutes ago, even though this match hasn't even been going for 10 minutes. But that just shows you what kind of competitor. KG Sakota is, he's just messing around with him, with him right now. Textbook vertical suplex here, goes for the cover, hooks a leg. And credit Sakota there, he's going for the win. Sakota obviously no slouch. You know, that same night that he turned his back and snaps, stabbed Snook in the back, he, he came within an eyelash of winning the UPW title against Tom Howard in a bloody encounter. You can never take anything away from Sakota. He's one of the most dangerous men in the history of UPW. Absolutely, and let me tell you something right now. Sakota got screwed, and if he hadn't got screwed in that show, we'd be watching a match right now calling Sakota the UPW Heavyweight Champion. Well, again, I think it might have been Sakota's overconfidence that cost him there. Nice belly-to-back suplex there into the pinning combination, only able to get a two count. You know, so far in this matchup, Josh, neither man really able to get the clear-cut advantage. This is very much a back-and-forth matchup. Again with the springboard into the clothesline. Here's the cover, too. Can't get the three count. No question. Both of these are great competitors. And as much as I'd like to, Todd Kennelly, I'd love to take something away from this solo snooker kid, but I just can't. But just watch. Sakota's going to get something going on here in a minute. Wait a minute. I think we just got a camera shot there. What the hell is the scourge of UPW Smelly doing at ringside? He has a well-documented history with Snuka, and the s entire Snuka family, for that matter. Here's a cover, and again, a near fall. Marty Valenza right in there for the two count. He's probably just coming out to send a little message that shows Solo Snuka that he beat down his dad at the Indian Casino and he could do the same thing to him. Well, Snuka may be a second-generation se superstar, yes, but should know better than to turn his back. Sakota's got him up. Beautiful Death Valley driver here now with the hook of the leg. Wow, and that was very, very close to being over there thanks to the outside interference by Smelly. Smelly serving a purpose out there. Seems to me as if he and Sakota are in cahoots here, Josh, and I don't like it one bit. What are you talking about? You've always got to cast aspersions, don't you? It's obvious. Smelly's just out here to get a look. Look, look. He, then then what the hell's he doing on the ring apron? Marty Valenza with his back turned. Sakota double arm DDT shades of Mick Foley. Hook of the leg. There's two. And this time he picks up the victory. Here is your winner, KG Sakota. Marty was in his way, moving in front of him. He just stood up on the apron and kind of gets some more. I don't know why Smelly was out there. And I got to tell you something, Josh. You told me Smelly was just trying to get a look. Then riddle me this. Why is he in the ring at this point? Let me tell you this. It's all Marty's fault. Smelly came out to get a better look at the action. Marty got in his way, so he had no choice but to get on the apron and see what was going on. Well, it looks to me that he's measuring Solo Snook here, sneaking like a thief in the night. And he's got him hooked. It could be the stink bomb. Smelly hits it. Extracurricular activity. This is totally ridiculous and uncalled for. It makes me sick. Like I said, he's just sending a message to Solo. He beat his dad down at the Indian Casino, and he could do the same thing to him. Well, all's fair in love and war, and now 
Yeah, what are you talking about now, Kenley? Talking about Smelly coming out and getting in the ring with extracurricular Ladies activity. Ladies and gentlemen, here we Skoolu go. Here? Skoolu oh, versus you. Smelly. This is an official matchup. Skoolu is scheduled, and he is on the format to face Smelly in this singles matchup here, which should be a hell of a match. He I, has every right to be out there. Smelly had no right to get involved in the match between Sakota and Snuka earlier. An official matchup. Until Johnny and picked it up right there, I didn't hear any introduction. I didn't see any any entrance video or anything that even indicated the match was starting. He jumped Smelly from behind, and that's all there is to it. Now, where was the Smelly entrance video? Well, you know what? We can argue all day, Josh, and that'll probably happen. But fact of the matter is, bell has sounded, and we're set for this matchup between two-time UPW champion Smelly and one of the best newcomers in UPW in Skulu, the Samoan Savage. Look out here. Nobody home. I just hope in this match that if another great young talent who wants to come out and do his homework like Smelly was doing in the last match, that referee Marta Valenza will get out of the way so he doesn't have to get up on the apron and possibly make it look like he had something to do at the end of the match. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, Josh, if it makes you feel better. Back to the action. Reversal by Skulu. We know about his power. Sending Smelly in, and Smelly just crumbles to the mat. He hit hard. That's atrocious. Look at this guy. He calls himself a pro wrestler. Look at Smelly. Look at Skulu. Smelly completely put together a physique that any guy would kill to get. Skulu, he's hanging out everywhere. What's going on, Todd? Yeah, you're one to talk, Josh. I'm not in the ring with my shirt off trying to yeah. show off what I got or don't have. Thank God. The place would clear out in a second. But now, Smelly with the overhand right, these brawling tactics that he learned with his older brother, Mad Dog Mike Bell, growing up in Poughkeepsie, New York, laying in the boots in the corner, nowhere for Skulu to go. Now this, another match that has history. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear about you doing any table dancing early in your career, Todd Kenley. Uh, yeah. Like I was saying, a lot of bad blood between these two. When, when uh, Smelly was preparing for his match with Jimmy the Superfly Snooker at the Cahila Creek Casino, he came out and busted a coconut over Skulu's head. You know, but apparently Smelly not doing his homework because it's not going to serve him too, too well here attacking the head of Skulu. That's not going to get the job done. Well, attempting to ram Skulu's head into the mat is akin to trying to bust a coconut over anything. That thing's harder than a rock, Kenley. Now, Smelly with the clubbing forearms, he sends Skulu back into the inside. And right now it's Smelly with everything going his way in this match. As it should be. The better, more talented, more experienced wrestler in the ring showing the Island Boy, just like he did at the end of the last match, that he is the real deal here. Yeah, well, Smelly certainly got a nice warm up coming in, unprovoked, hitting a stink bomb on Solo Snuka. And I got to think those two are going to meet down the line, but I can't take anything away from Smelly. Beautiful drop kick there, showing some agility for a man of his size and strength. Solo probably asked for it. He was probably standing at ringside jacking his jaw, saying something about Smelly's mom or something. He probably deserved it. Oh, uh, well, from where I sit, it was Smelly that was sitting at ringside jacking his jaw. Now Smelly choking out Skulu on the second rope. Referee Marty Valenza right in there administering a count. If he hits five, this thing's going to be over, and I can only hope that Smelly gets disqualified at this point. A seasoned veteran, Smelly is, knowing that he's got a four count to use, using every part of the ring he can, including the ropes. It's the mark of a really true and great athlete in that ring in Smelly. Well, Smelly is not a two-time UPW champion for nothing. I may not like him. Certainly, he comes over to this broadcast position every time he gets a chance. Skulu with the boot up, charges. And Smelly there with the power slam that he calls the super duper pooper scooper. That's one of his big moves, but strangely, nonchalant cover there, and that's not going to get it done on the big man. Oh, he's just toying with them now. And quite frankly, I would welcome him to come over to the broadcast position, Kennelly, because you can use all the help you could get. I think, I think Skulu here maybe having a little snack here at Smelly's expense. Maybe taking a chunk out of the massively formed I wonder muscle he, forearm there of Smelly. I wonder if he tastes like chicken. Well, Skulu there just backing that thing up. Where have I seen that before? And he is now taking over the advantage in this matchup, and the crowd here loves it. I think Skulu has some of his tribe members in the audience tonight, as always. Oh, it's probably just 50 or 60 people. He pulled off a Harbor Boulevard out here to pay to cheer for him. Fireman's carried by Skulu and referee Marty Valenza out into the Samoan drop. One of the staples of his 
offense, but there's no referee to make the count. There's two, three, four. This thing would be over. Again, Marty Valenza not being able to stay out of the way. Can we get somebody out here that can do their job, please? Do I have to go rep the match myself? Well, I got to tell you, you know what they say, Josh. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And right now, Smelly has been a little bit of both in this matchup. Oh, he would have kicked out if Marty was conscious. He was just taking his time and taking a rest there. Again, just like we saw before, Smelly, like a snake, just slithering up. And wait a minute. What is this? In the ring. What is this? This isn't his match. He had his match already. Why don't you say something about him coming in and interfering, Kennelly? Well, you know what I'm going to say? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Here we got both men coming up. We're fixing to see some double team offense here by Snuka. Two on and one. Skulu. Real, real brave on the part of the Island Boys. Two on one assault. Smell, he's got nobody out there watching his back. Well, there we had splashes in stereo. Sonic Fish with the audio. There's two and three. This is an atrocity. Here's your winner! You come out here talking Scoo! about what a scourge Smelly is because he may or may not have gotten involved in the last match. Solo comes out here and costs Smelly the victory. Surely he would have won this match, and you think it's all well and justified. And now Skulu getting his groove on. He put the exclamation point on this thing, putting Smelly out of his misery. And I got to tell you, baby, revenge is best served cold. You can better believe there'll be a rematch. And when there is, let's hope there's a referee who knows how to stay the hell out of the way. And we'll see Smelly come out on top for sure. Turnabout is fair play. And that is your lesson of the day, kids. Well, what incredible action we've had so far. And we're just getting started. Three titles are going to be on the line later as part of Home of the Brave. The ring is going to be graced by international superstars Otani and Tanaka. What a historic night of action we have here, Josh. Hey, we have some great matches lined up, as we always do. Let's just hope that some of them have a little better ending than the last couple have. I want to see someone get a straight-up victory and a true athlete get a win that he deserves, like Smelly should have right there.